Hello and welcome to the Toast of Entertainment podcast with me, Paul Collis. And today we're going to take a look at Alan Partridge live at Cardiff. Now, it's a four truck show and it's quite an interesting stage to be honest. So it's our normal stage layout, it's a little bit shallow in the sense of um, they've come a little bit forward than they normally would do uh, on the actual stage itself for the set and uh, I say that because you've got a big projection screen at the back of the stage which is only half the height of the stage from the top that is and then the rest of it you've got a, a truss platform in front of the screen which basically is hanging structure which they bolted together to make a walkway frame and I would assume that he's going to climb up there at some point during the show. Hanging from the uh, truss platforms are drapes either side, so stage left and stage right, leaving the mid section open for now. I don't know if it's going to close at some point. They might have a uh, little fold away bit of drape which just which the uh, which the crew will just slide in place when he comes out. Maybe that I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Stage left and stage right, you've got another set of screens, which are obviously going to be uh, close-up screens, so people at the back of the arena can see his face a lot better when the cameras zoom in. So lighting-wise, you have three lighting bars: so front house one, LX one, and LX two. In between front house one and front and uh, LX one, you have what's called a PF, which is a performer fly system. Now I don't know if they're going to fly an object across the stage, or if they're going to fly Adam Partridge in or someone else involved with the show. I don't know. I've not seen it. But it's there, they tested it with a heavy case just to see if it could take weight and uh, move across. So that's all nicely calibrated now. I've also been told that there's some, there's going to be a bit of audience participation. So, the tread, so they're downstage treads, stage left and stage right, so audience can get up and down from the stage when invited to do so. Stage left and stage right, you've got line arrays which are one wide and ten deep. They don't have uh, sideline arrays pointing 45 degrees out for surround sound effects, they, it's not needed. And in front of the stage you have four front fills and stage left and stage right past the treads you have some uh, bass bins with some front fills on top of them as well. So a basic setup, they don't need a meaty sound system because it is one man and his guests talking with a bit of music to bring them on and off. And that's the general gist of things so far. We'll be back after this. So not only does Master X Media have a series of podcasts, but we also have a series of books. The first book is actually two books, it's volume one and volume two, of a tribute to working at sea. The best fiction is based on truth. This is a compilation of short stories, rants and poems loosely based on the author's experience at working on a cruise ship. Some of these stories are based on actual events but highly exaggerated, whilst other stories are pure fiction. The title of the book A Tribute To is fitting with the tone of the book because, like a tribute act, it is a blatant altered reality where you can enjoy it knowing it's not quite the truth. There are things of alcoholism which used to be highly prevalent within workers in the cruise industry as well as stories with a sexual nature. So sit down, relax and enjoy the ride of A Tribute to Working at Sea Volumes 1 and 2. All of these books are available on Amazon and are available in paperback and on Kindle and the links for all of these books are in the description below. And we're back. So, Alan Golden Partridge is a comedy character portrayed by the English actor Steve Coogan, a parody of British television personalities. Partridge is a tasteless and inept right-wing broadcaster with an inflated sense of celebrity. Since his debut in 1991, he has appeared in media including Ray J, television series, books, podcasts and a feature film. Partridge was created by Coogan and Amarando Luciani for the 1991 BBC Radio 4 comedy programme on the hour, a spoof of British current affairs broadcasting. 
as the show's sports presenter. In 1992, Partridge hosted a spin-off Radio 4 spoof chat show, Knowing Me, Knowing You, with Alan Partridge. On the hour, transferred to television as The Day to Day in 1994, followed by Knowing Me, Knowing You later that year. In 1997, Coogan starred as Partridge in a BBC sitcom, I'm Alan Partridge, written by Coogan, Luciani and, and Peter Bainham, following Partridge's life in a roadside hotel working for a small radio station. It earned two BAFTA awards and was followed by a second series in 2002. After hiatus, Partridge returned in 2010 with a series of shorts, Mid-Morning Matters with Alan Partridge, written by Rob and Neil Gibbons, who have co-written every Partridge project since. Over the following years, Partridge expanded into other media, including the spoof memoir, I, Partridge, We Need to Talk About Alan, in 2011, and the feature film Alan Partridge, Alpha Papa, in 2013. In 2019, Partridge returned to the BBC with this time with Alan Partridge, a spoof of magazine shows such as The One Show, followed by an audible podcast in 2020 and a touring show in 2022. Bainham said that while the writers used Partridge to expose bigotry and that the humour came from his mistakes, they also wanted to create empathy. Critics have praised Partridge's complexity, realism and pathos. Vanity Fair called him a British national treasure and The Guardian described him as one of the greatest and most believed comic creations of the last few decades. Partridge is credited with influencing cringe comedies such as The Inbetweeners, Nighty Night and Peep Show. In a 2001 poll by Channel 4, Partridge was voted 7th in their first of 100 greatest TV characters. Alan Partridge is an incompetent and tactless television radio presenter. He is socially inept, often offending his guests, and has an inflated sense of importance and celebrity. According to The Telegraph, Partridge is utterly convinced of his own superiority and bewildered by the world's inability to recognise it. Marbury described him as part of a British tradition of sad little men characters such as Captain Mannering, Basil Fawlty and David Brent. His need for public attention drove him to deceit, treachery and shameless self-promotion and sometimes violence. For example, in the Know Me Know Yule Christmas special, he assaults a BBC boss and, and a paralysed man. Partridge holds right-wing views. He is a reader of the right-wing newspaper the Daily Mail and supported Brexit. Coogan, a liberal, described Partridge as a little Englander with a myopic, slightly philistine mentality. Earlier versions of Partridge were more bigoted, but writers found there was more humour in having him attempt to be liberal. For example, in I, Partridge, he stressed his friendship with a gay television presenter, Dale Winton. Keegan said he's aware of political correctness, but he's playing catch-up in the same way that the Daily Mail is a bit PC. It wouldn't be openly homophobic now. Alan is the same. He tries to be modern. Coogan felt the humour came from Partridge's misjudgment rather than a celebration of bigotry. I don't want to add to the sum total of human misery. I want to point out things where we can improve our behaviour, myself included. I think if you've got the skills, you can make people laugh. Use it to hold people who are privileged and powerful accountable. Partridge lives in Norwich in the east of England. Luciana said the writers chose it as it is geographically just a little bit annoyingly too far from London and his weird kind of isolated feel that seems right for Alan. According to Forbes, Partridge has bad taste and Coogan described him as the wrong side of cool. He is a fan of, James, of the James Bond films and Lexus cars and his music tastes include Wings and ABBA. Partridge named his son Fernando and his talk show Knowing Me, Knowing You after ABBA songs and his talk show catchphrase aha and his talk show catchphrase aha also comes from abba in earlier incarnations partridge's wardrobe include a blazer a badge and tie driving gloves and two short shorts styles he describes as sports casual and imperial leisure according to luciani by the time of alpha papa his wardrobe had evolved into the Top Gear presenter's circa 2005 stage with sports jacket and foppish fringe. As Coogan aged, the age and makeup he wore in earlier performances became unnecessary. According to Coogan, Partridge was originally a one-note sketchy character 
and freak show, but so, but slowly became refined as a dysfunctional alter ego. Bainham told The Guardian that despite the fact that people say he's awful, a lot of the time we were trying to build empathy. You're watching a man suffer, but also at some level identifying with his pain. Marber said Partridge's fundamental characteristic is, despera is desperation. Felicity Montague, who plays Partridge's assistant Lynn, felt he was vulnerable and lovable and a good person deep down. Luciani said that Partridge says, stays optimistic. He never sees himself as others see him, and that despite his failings, he was the perfect broadcaster for all these times when there were 24 hours to fill and dead time as a crime. He has a unique capacity to fill any vacuum with his own verbal vacuum. The Gibbons brothers felt that by the time of mid-morning matters, when Partridge is working for an even smaller radio station, he is more at peace with himself, and that his lack of self-awareness saves him from his misery. Right, so now we've heard a bit of background about the character Alan Partridge. We're going to get back to uh, the rest of the build. We'll be back after this. The Royal Carnarvon Crescent by Paul Collis from Master X Major when a neighbourhood dispute explodes into an all-out war. So Chaz Bruford, his wife Ellie and their young daughter Aurora move into Carnarvon Crescent. They soon become aware of the troublesome next door neighbour who makes a point of living in her house for over 50 years. From the moment Chaz arrived and began to unload, his new neighbour takes an instant dislike into him and she goes out of her way to make Chaz and his family feel unwelcome. The animosity quickly spirals out of control from both parties and the mutual respect gets lowered right into the gutter from the outset. Chaz comes to realise that this is not just any war, it is a neighbourhood war to end all wars. This book is available to buy on Amazon and this book is available on hardback, paperback and Kindle. This book is pure fiction and should not be used as a user manual. And we're back. So, everything's now uh, finished. The stage is fully dressed. They've got some comfort monitors on the front of the stage. So, your little prompts, which are basically cue cards. So, if they lose track of where they are, it's got a cue card of the rough area of what they're going to be talking about. So, essentially, just jog their memory. It's not got the whole script on there, it's just bullet points. The set is now finished uh, being built and what they've done with the truss platform is they've added on a staircase stage left and stage right to take you up to it and at the back of the stage stage left and stage right you have what's called truss towers which are just ladder trusses in a frame that which stand upright and are tied off to the lighting rig for extra stability and they put a lot of weight in the bottom of it to keep it nice and rigid. And on those truss towers, you've got a handful of moving light washes and a handful of moving light profiles to give a nice extra dimension to it. Additionally, they also have a couple of floor moving lights on the downstage left and downstage right extreme points just before the uh, treads to come onto the stage. And when I say treads, they're little staircases, it's just there to talk. All the projectors are now focused and the projectors onto the main screen there's two so they've had to blend the lines to make sure that it all merges together nicely and that is controlled via a media server which is set up backstage and the rest is all done I'm just waiting for the sound check to happen and the play the house music for the audience to come in so you're not far off from opening and and there is a nice chilled relaxed feel about this entire show which is good which is really good because they've obviously ironed out all the kinks in it they're mid tour and i got a fortnight left on the tour schedule we'll be back after this check the mic and make sure it sound right boys master x media presents lord of the memes bad dog farmer frank's filthy fucking farm and Bonnie Bouncing Baby Bastards. All three of these books are meme books and they come up with some pretty brutal and hilarious memes which are definitely not for children or the easily offended. 
These are ideal gifts for Secret Santa, Father's Day or even birthday presents for the fun loving man. So why not take a chance and make his day when he gets to read a Lord of the Memes meme book. All three books are available on Kindle, hardback and paperback on Amazon. And we're back. So lighting wise, well, what can I say? It, with all the chrome structures and the lights shining onto the chrome structures, it just reminded me a lot of early 2000s Top Gear, which isn't bad. It's brilliant. It's basically uh, going into Alan Partridge, the character Alan Partridge's um, taste, because that's what he thinks is cool and hip. Now the sound quality was flawless throughout. I mean, there was uh, no feedback and had the right amount of, of sound effects on the vo on the vocals, such as um, when he did the flashbacks, where there's a little bit of reverb on there, making it sound like he's not there, he's somewhere else. You know, a nice little bit of echo on there, not too much, and it worked really, really well. And when he was doing his songs, there was a little bit of reverb on there as well to make his voice a lot better when it comes to singing because the character Alan Partridge is not supposed to be able to sing properly. He uh, sings like a middle-aged tit <laughs> and that's the best way I can describe it. Now another thing is that all the sound effects and there was a lot of sound effects and voiceovers. They're all perfectly balanced within the live vocals as well and it came across really really good. Such a great sound mix and it was executed flawlessly. Now I can't say much about the content of the show because I don't want to spoil the uh, gags for everyone but in, a, but in a nutshell, Steve Coogan is constantly in character throughout. He doesn't, he doesn't drop it at all and he piles on the absolute cringe constantly i mean throughout i mean a good a good example of this is having all his young dancers backing him and doing uh, some upbeat dances whilst a middle-aged man is trying to act hip it's absolute shit but i love shit especially when the awkwardness is absolutely present at all times there's even a part the moment when alan partridge went into the audience and uh, he started to roast them and he pulled out his mobile phone and and then via Bluetooth his camera connected to the uh, central screen which um, looks pretty uh, crap to be honest but it was supposed to look crap because it's Alan Partridge doing something all middle-aged and crap so what why did it look crap well at the end of the day it was laggy because it was going from uh, the camera's Bluetooth onto the uh, central screen so it was full of lag and the side screens had his uh, normal cameraman with his uh, high def uh, cameras to give the audience the close ups and that was working perfectly fine so the altered reality that Alan Partridge had to the audience his screen from the camera was supposed to look absolutely crap because it's Alan Partridge who is a middle aged <laughs> well how can I put it whereas Alan Partridge is middle aged and technically inferior because that's just what middle aged people are like anyways along with the uh, crapness of the central screen you also had Alan Partridge's costume so in Act 1 he had on a costume that the character Alan Partridge would find absolutely cool and that is a white jacket a white shirt, a white set of trousers, white socks and white uh, shoes. So that absolutely looks terrible, especially when an older man's trying to look hip and great with this, but he's not. <laughs> and it works really well, that that's a great gag. And uh, that that's pretty much all the gags I'm gonna say about, because I don't wanna spoil the rest of the show for anyone else, to be honest. Now, how did the audience react? Well, like myself, everyone's laughing where they needed to laugh. And it's because it was genuinely funny. It was awkwardly funny and cringe-inducingly funny. But yes, if you have an opportunity to watch this show, go and get yourself a ticket. And if you can't get out of a ticket, wait till the show, wait till the tour's finished because I guarantee you there will be a tour DVD of this coming out at some point. 
or probably stream it off of whichever provider has gets the rights to it but definitely get a copy of this show it is funny it is incredibly funny if you've enjoyed today's podcast please hit like subscribe and share and if you haven't already done so why not check out more content from master x media on our website that is www.masterxmedia.info and we shall catch you next time bye for now Thank you.